So a battery is whenever you have galvanic cells, those are cells we've been working with, uh, uh, electrochemical cells that we've been making. Usually what happens is you put those in series to increase the voltage. So whenever you do that, the potentials or the voltages of individual cells will add to give more total power or more total potential. And this is DC power as in contrast to AC power. So it's where we're taking chemical energy, chemical reactions, and converting that to electricity. Any guesses when the battery first came about? Any guesses like 1980, 1970, whatever. 1940? No, before that, you said. Way before that, that is correct. 1780? 1780? Way before that, actually. Way before the 1600s. Yeah, way, way early. We're talking, we're talking BC. Yeah, the ancient Egyptians and the Syrian uh, cultures had batteries that have been excavated around the Iraq area, and, uh, and we're not exactly sure what they used it for, but possibly for electroplating, uh, some gold plating or things like that. So, but yeah, there's batteries, <laughs> there's electrolytes, they figured out how to do it, they put salts in there, just like remember we need salts to make our battery work, they had the electrolytes, they had the metals in there, the iron and the copper, to make that reaction go, and it was spontaneous. Uh, and so, uh, and this is actually really tiny, uh, but uh, if, I was, if I was doing demos, I'd bring in a little simulation of it. It's got a little tiny thing uh, that yeah, can power stuff and you can measure voltage off of it. So they're really old, really old. Now we're not going to be talking about these types. Some of the more recent ones is what we're going to talk about. And you'll want to know these different types of cells. So let me go through them. There'll be several types to learn about. One is called the primary, oops, oh, no, no. <laughs> imagine that's our primary cell. This is where the cell uh, reaction is oh, not reversible. So you can't reverse, a, reverse it, basically the battery is going to go dead. Okay, there's, within the primary cell, there's more than one category, okay? So I'm going to go into subcategories right now for the primary cell. One is the Lelanche, or the dry cell. Uh, oh, that one. Okay. And there's a C here. Mm. Okay, here we go. Or dry cell. <coughs> Uh, this is your common like uh, double A, triple A, C battery, D battery, those sort of things. Uh, let me write out the half reactions for you. You can take a look at these. They are somewhat complex. The anode and the cathodes. So zinc goes, this one, the first one is pretty simple. There's the anode, the cathode, plus two ming manganese four oxide, plus two electrons, goes to uh, Mn2O3, plus two ammonias, plus water. And this is, let me get my other, this is called the acid dry battery. We don't use these as much, or you probably haven't seen these as much, but this is the acid version of the dry cell battery. This voltage is about a, a, a volt and a half. So we've got about, I'll put approximate here, approximately a volt and a half. Okay, there's another kind of dry cell. Let me put that up here. The other kind of dry cell, uh, oops, 
this. It's called the alkaline. So this is, again, dry cell. This is your Duracell sort of battery, the alkaline battery. Uh, you'll see it's pretty similar. We've got the anode and the cathode, as we should. Uh, but it's just written in basic form. So alkaline means base. Cathode is two, and it's still got the zinc and the manganese. That's still the same. Just kind of switch it over to base form. don't need to memorize these reactions, but you can know that the anode is zinc and the cathode is manganese, a manganese oxide. Here again, the, the potential is very similar. The reason we like dry cell batteries, whether acid or alkaline, or acid or base, is that these hold their charge really well. So they're good for emergencies. If you're building your uh, nuclear bomb storm cellar, and you want to put some flashlights in there, you're going to use the dry cell batteries because those will hold their charge. So start digging out your basement, put those batteries in there. You don't want to put a different kind of battery in there, like the kind in your laptop, because those are going to be draining over time, and they'll go bad. These uh, batteries, you might have seen that batteries corrode, and we're going to talk about corrosion. Basically, what happens is uh, when the shell of the battery starts to fall apart, and the stuff oozes out of it, the manganese paste oozes out of it, that's when it starts to go bad. So here's your typical dry cell. Uh, you've got a graphite rod, that's your uh, electrode, right there in the middle. It's the electrode for the cathode side. You've got your manganese, that's the cathode, and a paste in the middle, so that paste that you might have seen if you've dug in there. You've also got this ammonium chloride paste in there. This acts as your electrolyte, your salt. And then the casing is your zinc part, the anode. So that's the inside of the casing. Uh, and that's your basic dry cell battery. Uh, now, there's a different kind of primary cell. So let's look at the other kind of primary cell. This is called uh, it has different names. We can call it a silver zinc cell or the button battery. So this has an anode and cathode as well, <coughs> as it should. Uh, here we've got zinc plus 2 OH minus goes to zinc oxide plus water plus two electrons. And we've got a silver cathode though. Silver two, uh, silver one oxide plus water plus two electrons goes to two silver uh, plus two hydroxide. Is this acid or alkaline? It's so alkaline, you can see the hydroxides there, so it's got to be alkaline. Here, we're talking about an E-squiggly uh, that's approximately 1.8 volts. So it's got a pretty good voltage. The thing about this is that, and I'm sure you've seen them before, if you've taken apart your watch, or sometimes your calculator or other devices that are smaller have these little, it looks like a button, that's why they call button batteries. They're really tiny, and uh, so they have, but they have a high storage capacity. So that's why they're great. They, it can run your watch for years, and it, it's really tiny. So if you need something small, but has a high storage capacity, it doesn't need to run something really big that's going to take a lot of power. This is great. When you get your hearing aids and put those in your ears, those are probably the type of batteries you have in there, so they're really lightweight uh, uh, and small. So you can see we've got the zinc anode, we've got the uh, electrolyte kind of paste there because that acts as your salt, and we've got the silver paste at the very bottom. Again, these will go until you run out of material, so the, full, the reaction is done happening, or until the casing falls, falls apart. 